Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So this particular video is regarding the UPSC Geoscientist exam. So if you are already aware about it, this video will tell you that when this exam is going to happen, what are the eligibility criteria and all the other related things. If you have never heard about this exam, you should know about it because this is one of the exam which gives you a, a gazetted officer job. That means a grade job just after qualifying masters okay so in case if you are not interested in going for research and you have done your master so this is one of the opportunity with which you can get a good job good get a good government job after masters okay so that's what this video is going to be about so upsc has basically announced their application or their notification for the upcoming geoscientist exam so i'm going to explain you all about that okay so this is your upsc website and all you have to do is you have to come to this particular examination section and come a little down to this particular active examination section okay now here you will see all the active examinations and here you will see combined geoscientist preliminary exam so this exam is conducted in two stages one is pre and one is mains so this notification is for pre exam okay so let's click on this and now we will be taken to the page of combined geoscientist preliminary exam the date of notification is 20th of september and the date of commencement of exam is of is on 18th of february okay so it will be just after gate exam so gate exam will be in the first week of february this will be in the second week of february okay duration of exam is one day there are two exams which will be conducted so one whole day will be utilized for this exam and the date of receipt of uh, application is till 10th of uh, uh, 10th of October 6 p.m. Okay, so you can only fill the form till 10th of October 6 p.m. And a date of upload is given to you. So when this notification was uploaded, and you can download this notification and read about this in detail. Okay, so once you click on this, you will be getting a whole PDF over here, which will be having all the details. Okay, it's it's a big PDF of 36 pages. What I have done, I have come like I have compiled all the in important information for you so that. I can explain you all the things and I have highlighted them over there for you. So let's discuss about that. Okay, so this is the PDF which you are going to get once you download the notification, complete notification. So as you can see, this is for uh, the examination notice number 02 for 2024 geologist or geoscientist basically. And uh, this is uh, like uploaded on 20th of September and the last date for submission of application is 10th of October. Combined Geoscientist Exam 2024. This is the website from where you can access everything. Okay, all the important websites will be there in the description of this video, so you can directly come to that particular website. Okay, so the first thing is over here that candidate to ensure their eligibility and how to apply. So I'll be talking about everything one by one. So first of all, you can only apply through this website. Okay, that is upsconline.nic.in. If you guys want, I will make a detailed video of form filling. Okay, how to fill the form. I'll make that. If you guys will uh, show interest in the comment section below okay so now there are few things which we have to know about so first thing is that uh, like uh, they have given something new this year okay that is OTR that is one time registration that means uh, once you do registration and if you want to make some changes in that so although on 10th of October last date of form filling will end but in case if you have made some mistake and want to correct them then you can do that till 17th of October okay that's what it says and modification in the application other than one time registration profile that you can do from 11th of October to 17th of October. Uh, then we have candidates should have details of one photo ID. Okay, so these are the important IDs which you need to fill the form. Okay, you need either Aadhaar card, voter ID card, PAN card, passport, driving license, or any other photo ID card issued by state or the central government. Uh, you need to have the detail of the photo ID card will be like that will be provided by the candidate, and you have to carry that uh, document while giving the exam as well. Okay. So, it is given that this photo ID will be used for the future referencing and uh, the candidate is advised to carry this photo ID while appearing for the examination and personal test means uh, for the interview. Last date of the application is given 10th of October as I have said to you and uh, there are certain special instruction that the preliminary exam of the combined geoscientist uh, for the two objective type paper will be conducted on OMR sheet. That means this will be an offline exam. Okay, It is not going to be a computer based test. This will be an offline exam. Okay. All right, there are some general instructions. I have skipped that first of all. Let's talk about the plan of exam. Okay, you should know about that what this exam and how this is being planned. So, there are three stages of this exam stage one, stage two, and stage three. Stage one is preliminary exam, that is pre exam, UPSC geoscientist pre exam. 
and over here the questions are objective type they will be having two papers and uh, basically once you qualify this pre exam then you will be called for the mains exam okay marks secured in the pre exam will be counted for deciding the final merit then the stage 2 is for the mains exam in that you will be having descriptive type paper and there will be three exams okay there will be three exams uh, based upon your subject and uh, then followed by a personality test that means your interview so the marks obtained in the main exam will also be counted for the final merit so your marks obtained in stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 all will be combined together to make the final merit for you okay uh, the mains exam will be conducted around 22nd of june 2024 that means in the next year and these are the centers at which the mains exam is going to be conducted okay uh, let's talk about how many posts you have okay so uh, uh, for the post in the geological survey of india that is ministry of mines uh, for the chemist group a there are 13 posts okay total there are 34 posts and there are 13 posts for chemist group a uh, and the following vacancy are reserved for personal with benchmark disability so one vacancy is for personal with benchmark disability then uh, category 2 there are two exams category 1 and category 2 for category 2 the post of central groundwater board ministry of jal shakti department of water resource river development and ganga rejuvenation so for that uh, for chemical sciences or for chemistry scientist b chemical group a there are two posts okay so there are total you can say 13 posts in uh, uh, geological survey of india and two posts by the ground uh, central ground water board okay so total 15 post you have you can apply for these post okay for chemistry i'm telling for other subjects also it is mentioned but i will only talk about chemistry people let's just scroll a little bit down so obc candidates be very careful you have to get a certificate based on the uh, on the income for the financial year of this this or this and it should be issued after 1 4 2023 that means after march uh, sorry uh, yeah after april 2023 uh, but not later uh, than the closing date of application that is uh, 10th of October. So, you, you should be having uh, OBC certificate which should be issued recently. Okay, Old OBC certificate might get rejected. So, make sure if you do not have a OBC certificate, please apply for it so that you get it on time and you can fill the form. Okay, Coming down a little bit, let us talk about eligibility criteria now. So, the first eligibility is that you should be you should be a citizen of India or a Nepal citizen or a subject of Bhutan or a Tibetan refugee okay, uh, who has come over India before 1st January 1962. Let us talk about age limit. Okay. So, the age limit provided for this is 32 years. Okay. So, the age limit is 32 years. That means you must have not been born earlier than to 2nd January 1992. So, if your date of birth is before 2nd January 1992, you cannot fill this form. And you should not be born later than 1st January 2003. So, if your date of birth falls in between of these dates, that is 2nd January 1992 to 1st January 2003, you can fill the form. Otherwise, you cannot fill the form. Okay, You must be exceeding the date or uh, the age of uh, or the minimum age. Okay, So, you must be exceeding that. For the other one, that is for Central Ground Board Ministry of Water Resource, again the same thing is there. Okay, Same uh, like, uh, uh, like the age age criteria is same for both of them 32 years all right then candidates should ensure that they meet the age eligibility criteria for each post mentioned above for which they are applying basically both are same so you should be aware about it you should meet the age criteria then there are relaxation given up to seven years in case of government servants uh, government servants uh, there is a five year of relaxation given to a person who belongs to scheduled caste. There are three years of relaxation given to a person of OBC category. Three years of relaxation if you are a defense service, per, uh, defense service personnel disabled in operation. Uh, five years of relaxation in case of ex-servicemen including commissioned officers. Five years of relaxation in case of ECOs or SSCOs. 10 year of relaxation in case of blind, deaf, mute or orthopedically handicapped person. Okay, So, these are the age relaxations provided to you. You can read about it a little bit more. I have just highlighted important points from here. Okay? Coming down a little bit. So, these are the things which will be registered. Okay, These are the things which will identify your application. One is your name and year of examination, uh, registration ID, roll number name of candidate in full and block letters complete postal address and valid and active email address so these 
things in case if you want to communicate regarding anything if your form is not filled correctly or any problem occurs in your form filling these information are the one which needs to be there with you so that you can communicate with the upsc in order to act like ask or request anything okay so these information are important for you okay now let's talk about minimum educational qualification for the chemist group a in the geological survey of india and scientist b under cgwb so all you need is masters in chemistry or applied chemistry or analytical chemistry okay from any university incorporated in the act of parliament or state legislature or other educational institute okay established by the act declared okay so basically you should have masters in chemistry or applied chemistry or analytical chemistry so to apply for this particular post now uh, let's come a little down let's talk about the fees so uh, candidates exempting female candidates scst candidates person with benchmark disability okay so these people do not have to pay any fees but those who are among uh, apart from them means male candidates falling in general category and obc category those have to pay 200 rupees as the application fees for filling the form okay again it is highlighted here again that all female candidates and candidate belonging to scheduled caste scheduled tribes are not required to pay any fees no fees exemption is however available to obc ws candidate and they are required to pay the prescribed full fee all right coming down a little bit this is the where you have to apply i have already told you modification in otr that is one time registration i have already explained that you can do that till 17th of october modification in the application other than otr profile that also you can do till this particular date uh, these are these are certain more points which are mentioned that the candidate applying for the application should ensure that they fulfill all the eligibility condition for admission to the examination they are admission at the stages of examination for which they are admitted by the commission that is pre mains and the uh, interview will be purely provisional subject to their satisfying uh, uh, satisfying the prescribed eligibility condition if on verification at any time before or after the preliminary exam mains exam or interview it is found that they do not fulfill the eligibility condition their candidature for the examination will be cancelled by the commission so you have to make sure that you are applying under the like you you qualify for the exam to apply okay in case if you don't then you will be the uh, the candidature will be cancelled okay what are the documents needed while filling the form so you need a certification of age certification of eligibility criteria uh, sorry educational qualification then certificate of uh, caste certificate in case if you are claiming that then age relaxation if you are claiming that you need a certificate for that and then you also need a certificate in case you belong to uh, pwbd category okay coming down a little bit now we have the last date as i mentioned it is on 10th of october 2023 till 6 pm okay there are other things also just read about it just i have highlighted the important points so that you get to know as i said the plan of examination it consists of three stages a stage 1 which will be a pre exam it will be a objective type paper right then a stage 2 which will be mains exam which will be descriptive type paper and then interview okay Uh, now let's talk about what papers you have to give so for chemist uh, and scientist b okay for that you will be having for pre exam okay this is for pre exam you will be having two papers paper 1 which will be general studies and paper 2 which will be chemistry both of the papers will be of 2 hours general studies will be of 100 marks chemistry will be of 300 marks total 400 marks pre exam you have to give then mains exam chemistry you have to give three exams for the mains okay this is for the mains exam so for chemistry you have to give three exams one is for paper 1 paper 2 paper 3 basically one will be inorganic one will be physical one will be organic and analytical combined three hours for each exam and 200 marks for each total 600 marks for your mains exam so 400 from pre 600 from mains total 1000 marks you will get till now okay and uh, then these are the other things related to the uh, Uh, disability and uh, the conditions for that now let's talk about the syllabus of combined geoscientist okay so for stage 1 that is objective type exam your first paper which is general studies that will contain all these topics current events of national and international importance basically current affairs history of india india and world geography then indian polity 
then economic and social development, then general issues and then general science. Okay, these are the important points. Basically, any general science exam uh, conducts all these things. So, they will be asked in the exam. Okay, then we will be having paper 2. Okay, paper 2 will be chemistry and that will include all these topics like uh, it will include all the subjects like chemical periodicity, chemical bonding, then acid and base, theoretical basis of quantitative inorganic analysis. Uh, kinetic theory and gases uh, state theory, then chemical thermodynamics, solution of non-electrolytes, uh, electrochemistry, basic organic chemistry, stereochemistry, type of organic reactions, uh, then you have molecular rearrangement. So, all these topics will be there. Okay, uh, It is given in very detail. I have just told you the highlighted or the topic. Basically, if you are preparing for CSI net or gate, the syllabus will remain same. Okay, Just the question level will be a little easier. Okay. Coming down a little bit, now we have the syllabus for mains exam. Okay, So, for mains exam, syllabus is more detailed. So, this is for the post of chemist, stage 2 descriptive type. So, we will be having inorganic chemistry paper 1, uh, which will include inorganic solid. You can see complete inorganic chemistry is actually asked. Then paper 2 is physical chemistry. Again, complete physical chemistry will be there. And then uh, paper 3 will be analytical and organic chemistry, which will be in two parts. Pa part A will be analytical chemistry and a part B will be organic chemistry. All right. So, that is what this syllabus is all about. Uh, there will be negative marking in the exam. It says that there will be a penalty that is negative marking for the wrong answer. So, there are four alternatives for each question. Uh, for each question for which wrong answer has been given, the candidate one third of the marks will be deducted. If the candidate gives more than one answer, then also it will be treated as the wrong answer and again penalty will be issued. And if the question is left blank, in that case, no negative marking will be done. All right. Now, uh, for filling the form or basically for filling the OMR sheet, offline exam it is, so that is why it is mentioned that they should use black ball pen only to darken the circle for writing in the boxes they should use bla black ball pen since the entries made by the candidate by darkening the circle will be taken into account while evaluating the answer sheet um, on the computerized machines they should make these entries very carefully and accurately the candidate must mark responses in the answer sheet with good quality black ball pen Okay, they have also also given you some examples how to like mark and all. So, that is all for this video. I just wanted to inform you about important dates, eligibility criteria and what exactly this exam is going to be, how this is going to be conducted. I hope you got to know. I hope you got to know the idea of it and um, uh, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, if you have any other question, you can ask in the comment section below and if you guys want, I will make a video on form filling of this particular exam. All right. So, all the best for you and I will recommend you if you are fulfilling the eligibility criteria, I will recommend you to fill this form. It is one of the opportunities which you should not miss after masters. Okay. So, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.